I changed the trade good of every province in the world to gold. No production, no trade, just goods produced and lots and lots of ducats. We want to see how the world manages all that money, especially with inflation running as rampant as it is today. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like it and share it with a friend who you think will also enjoy it. You guys are going to have to forgive me for sounding like Bane from Batman, one of you filthy gamers at ParadoxCon gave me super tuberculosis, but aside from that, I'm doing all right, and we're back with another video. As I said in the intro, the political map mode is going to look roughly the same. Of course, we got rid of the New World natives because they suck, but the trade goods for every province in the world is all gold, baby. Now you guys can't give me a hard time for not taking Kosovo in a peace deal because every province is going to give you gold. Now, when you consider provinces like this uh, Copper Mountain up here in Dalaskagen in Sweden, yeah, there's some goods produced bonuses that will directly affect the usefulness of the gold in this province. As you can see here, it will generate a yearly income of 216 ducats. So divided by 12, this one province every month is giving them 18 gold. But you guys know the drill. We speed five, we unpause. Now, with a lot of gold comes a lot of inflation. Basically, every single nation in the world is going to be having some massive inflation issues. Now, how much of an issue that will be is really going to be kind of determined as time goes on. It may honestly just kind of bring everybody back down from being super rich to being not so rich, but only time is going to really tell. Oh, yeah, that line is definitely going up. A uh, red arrow go up indeed. You can see France is over here making 23 ducats a month. England with a cool 16. Mamluks over here with 90. Oh my gosh. Taking a look down here, you got this granary of the Mediterranean and a bunch of these provinces. So that local goods produced modifier is uh, boosting how much gold they're getting from these provinces. To put that into perspective, the beefy massive Ottomans are only making 72 ducats a month. But then you also have Ming. Oh, good old Ming. 289 ducats every single month. That is incredible. My goodness, Ming has 10,000 in the treasury already. The crazy part is, is that they have no production and no trade. There is no trade value anywhere in the entire world because gold does not contribute to trade value. So I'm not really sure how that's going to affect global trade. It might mean that it won't spawn, but uh, if that's the case, then it means we won't ever get absolutism. I'm not really sure how that's going to look, but uh, you know, only time will tell. It appears that many people are able to bankroll some pretty large wars early on with all this gold. Castile invaded Aragon and took a massive chunk of their land. France has eaten Brittany as well as a chunk of Savoy. And Novgorod is essentially annexed only like 10 years into the game. With all this extra money flowing around, it's really hard to say what sort of implications it's going to have for the long game. France is going strong, consolidating most of the Metropolitan. Now it's only a matter of time before they hopefully start pushing into Burgundy, get nice and strong that way. They're currently in the process of beating the Tar out of England as well as Aragon, as well as Portugal. Safe to say France is having a good game so far. Timmy over here has integrated a few of his subjects, namely Coruscant and uh, Transoxiana. And all of his subjects are loyal now because they do not have enough force limit to fight them. So it looks like we might see a pretty strong Timmy and possibly a Mughals. The India Thunderdome continues to be the India Thunderdome. Bengal is big, but not massive yet. But remember, it is a Chubert vid, which means Bengal will be massive. And speaking of massive, Ming still going strong. All that gold income keeping them bolstered. They're actually pushing Chagatai to make them a tributary, which I feel like you don't see that. But uh, yeah, you know, maybe this is just a bit more of that. Ming is strong, Ming is strong, Ming is strong. And then Ming collapses into a million pieces within like three years. Opening ideas, Portugal here with exploration, France with economic and England with trade. So once this war is over, we might expect a little bit of colonization, but it's looking like it's probably going to be a slower start for the colonial game. Austria with quite a bit of aggressive expansion, taking over a ton of land from Hungary and Croatia. Looks like they don't need the personal union this time. And I probably should have shown this in the very beginning, but you can see the most gold income in the world is actually the Mamluks because of that uh, granary of the Mediterranean, followed by France, Castile, then Muscovy, Ottomans, Timmy, VJ, Lithuania, Ayutthaya, Bamanis, England, QQ, Delhi, and then Denmark. So this is obviously just mostly people who have the most provinces, right? More provinces means more gold income. Uh, and then obviously the Mamluks have a lot of provinces as well as province modifiers that give them extra goods produced in those provinces. All right, so the Burgundian inheritance did not happen the way that I expected. It seems that everybody was released 
and that Burgundy and everybody else that was released is now a member of the Holy Roman Empire. So the HRE got a little bit of a buff, not quite as much as our previous video, but uh, yeah, still got a little bit of a buff. That's going to be hard for France because it locks them out of a bit of their mission tree. But with all this gold income they have, it's safe to say they will be able to fund an army to fight off the Emperor. And it also appears that as soon as Castile gets to Admin Tech 10 and uh, cores up Barcelona, they're going to be able to form Spain militarily. Kind of crazy. Two wars, they took all of this. Uh, I had no intervention. I didn't touch anything. So yeah, Castile is just going ham, apparently. And they also have a personal union in Portugal. So safe to say... They're going to be doing pretty good because Portugal already went Expo Expansion. Castile has won Exploration, so uh, Castile is going to own the entirety of the New World when the time comes. But just when I thought I've seen it all, we've got Jolof over here colonizing. I don't know how. Uh, they don't have Expo ideas. It must be through a mission or something like that. But they are indeed colonizing the coast of uh, Brazil. The Reformation has spawned here in Northern Germany. No surprise, but there is some other surprises that I do have for you guys. Sneaking a peek here at the Great Powers, you're going to see Castile is number one. And Castile is only in charge of Spain as well as Portugal. They did manage to snag up quite a bit of Northern Africa, but there is no way that that is enough to make them the number one Great Power. That is until you open up their diplomacy view and you see that they have a PU over England. And in a very blessed turn of events, it seems that the Ottomans are getting dogpiled from both Poland and the Mamluks at the same damn time. You love to see it, folks. Meanwhile, Timmy's still having a very solid game, as well as Ming, all the way up into Manchuria. And though the Mandate is not doing super well, they are growing quite a bit. But uh, you know what that means? Not much. However, and I have no idea, however, Ming is all the way down into the Bengal Delta area. Um... I don't know how they manage it, but they definitely did. Also, in India, it looks like we have an unlikely candidate. I feel like you don't see Maywar pop off very often, but these guys are having a pretty solid game so far as well. Normally, it's either Bengal, Delhi, or like Bamanis that you see pop off over here, but Maywar is uh, holding their own this time around. Jolof still in Brazil, as well as Castile now. And aside from that, we're just seeing the Caribbean being colonized by Portugal. And a few decades later, things are looking quite a bit different. We've got a Russia that is formed under Tsar Vasily Rurikovich, Commonwealth who has formed under the Jagellians, or however that is pronounced. Little Milan over here is a personal union of France, and I think they were last time and I just forgot to mention it, so don't forget about that. That's pretty important. There's a lot of development in Northern Italy. And somehow, some way, we have the Commonwealth Balkans. I'm sure that will uh, tilt a couple of Greeks over here, considering the fact that it's like exclusively Greece over here. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the Commonwealth Balkans. Ottomans are slowly getting encroached upon. Mamluks are pushing their borders up here. Looking uh, better by the day, in my opinion. Castile is still rocking their PU of Portugal and England, so going strong there. England did not ever go colonial, so it looks like uh, England will not go colonial, because if you don't know, a subject nation will not take exploration ideas. One single colony over here. That is Norwegian. Uh, it looks like Norway has been integrated by Denmark. There will be no colonial competition or Castile and Portugal outside of maybe Jolof. I still don't understand how they've got a couple of provinces down here, but they're still working on them. Africa has been a Thunderdome, especially West Africa. Looks like Songhai is the one who has come out on top with this Nupe has eaten up Benin and a few of the tags surrounding them. Ethiopia still going strong enough. Uh, seems like they're just holding on. Central Africa and East Africa look remarkably similar to what it does in 1444. So nothing really to say about that. Southeast Asia, also remarkably similar to 1444. Nothing super interesting off the top of my head. Ming's got some peasants and some separatists, so yeah, maybe it's only a matter of time before they collapse again. And it seems that we've got Auchi and Ashikaga over here, duking it out for supremacy of the Japanese islands. We now have a Spain on the map, and we now also have a Commonwealth that is much bigger than it was last time we looked. Well, I don't know about much bigger, but... uh. The Balkan component of their nation is much bigger. Russia has decided that Norway is also Russia. And the Mamluks are slowly putting the squeeze on the Turks, pushing them over into Constantinople. We all knew this was coming eventually, uh, sometime sooner, sometimes later. This time, somewhere a little bit in the middle. Ming, not long for this world, they're collapsing. And, uh, you know, no surprise there. Congo is doing pretty well, uniting Central Africa. With our boys Kisanji over here kicking it still. They're an OPM, but they do exist, so we can hope for the best for them, right? 
The colonial game is still slow and steady. You got Portugal and Spain down here in South America, as well as Portugal in the Caribbean and Spain in Mexico, as well as Louisiana. We do now have France over here on the East Coast, though. So a new challenger has entered the arena. But considering the fact that we're 120 years in, not a whole lot of colonization done so far. All this gold and they're spending it on war instead of colonization. That doesn't exactly sound like a good investment, but who am I? An updated look at the great powers here in 1566. We got Spain, the Commonwealth, France, and the Mamluks, all with over a thousand. A Ming just slightly behind them at 987, with Austria, Russia, and Timmy not far behind them. So here's an interesting turn of events. We did have global trade spawn, uh, mostly just because a couple of random provinces in like South America and colonial regions get events that change the trade good. So uh, Madrid spawned it with like 1.5 ducats of value in the note, which is, you know, mildly hilarious. But uh, yes, the most valuable trade note in the world is 1.5 ducats. Meanwhile, taking a look over here, you're going to see some interesting border changes. For example, Aragon is Italy now, minus Rome. They did not take Roma. The Ottomans are no more. They are completely gone. France integrated Milan and have pushed all the way over into Austria, as well as further into northern and central Italy. Russia somehow got over here and colonized most of Siberia, and it looks like they're still on their way towards the coast, but look uh, pretty pitiful <laughs> while doing it. Timurids haven't really changed their borders a whole lot at all. So, I mean, take from that what you will. And the slow descent into madness that is China is still going strong. Spain has also integrated Portugal, so you can see all of their colonies have been appropriated to the Spanish crown. But looking up here, you're gonna see some yellow that is not Spanish because the Scots are colonizing, baby. Scotland forever. The French are getting pretty much full dibs over here on the East Coast as well as Canada. But it looks like the Dutch have decided to settle Quebec. What is more cursed, Quebec as it is right now or a Dutch Quebec? I'll be honest, both of them sound pretty terrible. Just kidding. I love you Quebecois boys. And it also looks like we've got Friesland over here in the New World deciding to get a late start on colonization. I do not know how this works, but Mixtec over here, a uh, Mexican native, is colonizing California. Tribal expansion. All right. Sounds good to me. Spain is definitely running away with the great power list here, though France and the Commonwealth are not too far behind them, and the Mamluks as well. However, Russia in fifth place is 655 dev is the highest after them. So, yeah, looks like we've kind of got our top four for the rest of the game, barring any major disasters. As far as gold income goes, Spain is definitely making the best out of it. 386 gold per month from gold. France with 324 and the Commonwealth with 271. England is still a loyal personal union under Spain, and it looks like they're being integrated at the moment as well. And I have no idea how they're managing to do it, but it looks like Spain is keeping their inflation pretty low. No economic ideas either, so somehow, some way, they're making it work. Like over here in Poland, inflation is just a number. They're sitting at almost 9%. That's like American numbers right now, but nobody else that I can see is really doing that bad. One time I looked at Spain and they were like 20 something. That means they're spending a lot of mana to bring it down, which you can see they are behind time on tech with admin. So that actually makes a little bit more sense. And since we're here, you can see we have religious peace within the empire with Brandenburg, the emperor. The Catholics had a pretty rough go at it with the Reformation, reformed looking like it did the bulk of the changing with a bit of Protestant here and there. However, England decided to stay Catholic. So Catholics overall pretty strong compared to what you usually see them doing, in my opinion. And with a little over 100 years left, things are looking a little bit spicy over here in Europe. Aragon, with a big old comeback, taking back most of their land in Iberia, beating the tar out of Spain with their ally of France. But that's not all. They've called in their other ally of the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth, who somehow stole the PU of England from Spain to themselves. Also, hilariously ruled by a Greek. Scandinavia has formed, which means nothing in this patch, but stay tuned for next week when Lions of the North releases because we got some spicy videos coming. Matter of fact, you should subscribe for that because there's going to be some really fun videos and you are not going to want to miss it. Bengal has grown, of course they have, they always do, but man, Dai Viet is definitely showing them up. Do you guys remember the Vietnamese capital of Beijing? It is certainly a thing in this timeline and I'm here for it. Scandinavia actually decided to go exploration ideas as well, 
and uh, they are actually fighting a war with Songhai right now, an imperialist war. The entirety of South America and the bulk of North America is at war with both the East Coast as well as France, Commonwealth, and their subject of England. And of course, Mamluki and Australia split with a Spanish Australia. I have officially seen everything that EU4 has to offer. Dai Viet is the emperor of China, currently attacking Russia in a war to force them to be a tributary. But meanwhile, over in Europe, Montenegro is the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire with the electors of Memigen and themselves. The Commonwealth has integrated their personal union of England and France continues to just consolidate a power base in their general vicinity. It appears that France has taken over quite a bit of Spain's colonies in Mexico. And somehow, some way, Zalisco here, a Mexican native, is in Alaska. Because why not? Also, look at that beautiful, beautiful name, Rajputana. Such a good tag. You do not ever see it formed, so I'm really happy it formed. And it also even looks like Maywar is the one that formed it, so even better yet. And a few hours later, my voice feels miraculously better, and we've got some interesting stuff to take a look at over here. Rajputana decided to do literally nothing with the opportunity given to them, and they basically have not grown in like 150 years. Bengal did as Bengal does and conquered most of Southeast Asia, but the Emperor of China, Dai Viet, managed to keep them out. And yes, Dai Viet's only subject is a tributary of Russia. Korea and Japan round out the other powers over here in East Asia, with Central Asia mostly being under the power of the Timurids, who never formed the Mughals, and the Commonwealth, who are in the process of getting their teeth kicked in by revolutionary Scotland. The Mamluks' borders have not changed a whole lot in the last few hundred years, and Spain has been pushed mostly out of Spain into Northern Africa. Western Africa split between Spain and, uh, yeah, Scandinavia. Mamluk decided to take the Congo over while Ajuran migrated from the Horn of Africa down into Madagascar as well as Western Africa. We do have a Zulu down here, so that's pretty cool. And somehow they have one idea. One. Total. I, I got nothing, man. South America is all yellow. North America, same as before, half blue, half yellow. But it does look like Spain made a bit of a comeback on the colonial front compared to France in the late game. Commonwealth Britain is hilarious and I love it. But even better yet, we've seen this before. We've got the Scotsmen here on the Isle of Man. And this war is actually a defensive war where the Commonwealth is attacking them and losing. Because you know France has to defend the revolution, right? The Dutch still exist in some capacity, very small but still existing nonetheless. And in the end, the Commonwealth rounds out number one with France and Spain. A few hundred development below them is Scandinavia, and then a thousand development below them is the Mamluks, followed by Bengal and Rajputana, then the Emperor of China, Dai Viet, down there in eighth place, economic hegemon of the world, a fully stacked up Commonwealth, and revolutionary France as the military hegemon. Somehow, some way, with almost a thousand ducats per month of gold income, they don't have a whole lot of inflation. I have no idea. The AI may actually be cheating that for all I know. I really don't have an answer for that. Either way, look at that. They're netting 500 ducats a month and they're like full occupied right now. That's pretty crazy. Here's the gold income we're working with. Scandinavia, 922. France was 783. Bengal was 728. Mamlux was 698. Rajputana with 570. And Aragon even with 503. Pretty crazy numbers. And as far as the religious map mode goes, yeah, uh, it looks like Catholic wins over here in Europe. And for the most part, the New World is almost exclusively Catholic as well. However, in the southern parts of Central America, we do have some reformed popping up. We cannot forget the Russian Orthodox tributary of the Dai Viet Empire of China, right? Tengri, Confucian, and Buddhist make out this portion over here with Shinto in Japan, of course. All of the Philippines is Catholic. Australia is a mishmash of Sunni and Catholic, with a couple of Protestant provinces sprinkled in there for good measure. India is mostly Hindu, no surprise there, and the rest is mostly Sunni. As far as cultures go, it's mostly what you would expect in the New World. Iberian cultures in the south, Iberian cultures in the north, and some French cultures over here. It does, however, look like the Dutch and Scottish colonies were all gobbled up, sadly. We can't forget about the Swedes that settled over here in West Africa. And good old Egyptian Australia, old faithful. 
Aside from that, you see quite a bit of Romanian. Looks like the Romanians decided to do a little bit of culture converting, as well as the Polish. The Polish actually got rid of the Slovaks. The English surrounded the Welsh over here and pushed the Scots out of Scotland and all the way up to Edinburgh. The Glaswegian accent sounds even more weird than I imagined it did before. Well, guys, I had a great time with this one, and I really do hope you did as well. Apologies for my sick voice. I know I was suffering at the beginning. I feel a lot better now, and I hope that you are all feeling well also. Big shout out to my patrons. They're going to be on screen now. If you want to become one and get early access to all of these videos, as little as $5 a month, you will get just that. If you want to join my Discord or my subreddit, you can check those out linked in the description below, as well as my Twitter. I've been trying to be active over there, tweeting and uh, giving my opinions on various things going on in the community. So check out my Twitter linked in the description. And as I said before, if you like the video, leave a like on it and share it with a friend. It really does help the channel grow. But that's all I got for you for this one. Till next time, stay chill.